Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a melt and pour shampoo bar. A melt and pour base for shampoo bars is something that is super new and hasn't existed until very recently. So it's exciting to be sharing with you this new product that I found. This is kind of revolutionizes shampoo bar making for a lot of people. You guys have seen me make shampoo bars from scratch using solid surfactants and liquid surfactants and sort of pressing them together either by hand or using my um, bath bomb press. So this is something that's totally revolutionary in the way that you melt it down just like you would any other melt and pour soap base. You put in your additives if you like and then you pour it into a mold. This process of melt and pour shampoo bar makes it very easy for any beginner person or anyone who doesn't want to invest a lot of money into learning how to make shampoo bars from scratch. Now I first heard about this base, I came across this base when I was watching a video from Katie Carson at Royalty Soaps and she had used this several weeks back to demonstrate how to make a shampoo bar and that really intrigued me so I bought my own and I have formulated a bar using this base that I'm really excited to be sharing with you today. In this video today I'm going to be sharing with you a full visual step-by-step -step process and tutorial of how to put together this beautiful plant-based Sendet shampoo bar and if you would like the full written recipe plus a written detailed tutorial including amounts and percentages and step-by-step -step written instructions please head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe along with now three years of archive recipes for just one small five dollar pledge. There are also four other tiers that you can take a look at and take advantage of if you like. We offer things like live monthly hangouts, live classes, coupon codes to my favorite suppliers, monthly gift packages, and so much more. I really hope you'll consider joining us over there. It's a great way to connect with other makers and it's a great way to connect with me. And it's patrons like you that really, really help me to continue to put out great content every week like this. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and prepare my mold. So I went ahead and I purchased a couple different molds off of Amazon, and I'll go ahead and place the link below for you to these, but I got a circular shaped one. These are always popular for shampoo bars. And then I got this kind of square cube shaped mold, and it has a, a nice looking little ridge right here that will look good when the bar is finished. And I think they're about 60 grams per cavity and they fit perfectly in the palm of your hand. So I am gonna be placing a little bit of these blue corn flowers in just a few of these. I got these on Brambleberry, but I thought it would be a nice little botanical touch. Um, I'm, in all honesty, I don't know what's gonna happen because I haven't tried these bars yet with um, any type of botanical. So, because this is going to be the top of the shampoo bar, pouring the melted um, shampoo base, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen to these petals. They might float up to the top. So I'm just going to put in a little bit into these three because corn flowers are pretty expensive. And if it doesn't work out, I don't want to waste a bunch of product. So that's it for my mold. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut up some of this shampoo bar base. Now this is a Sindet bar base. It's called Sindapore. So basically what that means is it's a synthetic detergent and it's made out of solid surfactants. This is much like the Dove Beauty Bar or the Dove Bar that everybody is used to buying from the grocery store. So this can be used for your body, your face, or your hair. This type of product or raw material is actually not considered soap and because it doesn't have any lye um, in it at all. It's made from solid surfactant, so you can't actually call it soap. So that's why we call it a Sindet bar. That's why Dove calls theirs a beauty bar. So it's got a low pH, it's very gentle, and actually very, very gentle on for sensitive skin and all of that. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and just, you see, I've used a little bit of this for testing purposes, but all I'm gonna do is go ahead and pop this out. It's got a very kind of clean um, detergenty smell to it, a light smell to it. 
And all we're gonna do is go ahead and cut this up like you would any other melt and pour style soap. And then we're gonna weigh it out our amount into this container. Okay, so when you slice through it, it actually feels very soft. It feels a lot like cutting up a cold process soap after it's come out of the mold. Um, and the thing about this product is it doesn't stay this soft. So it's kind of cool because after it sets up, after you make it and it sets up for a few days, it gets rock solid. So that's interesting. I was a little skeptical at first when I was testing this out. I was like, oh, this is going to be very soft. Um, but if you read up on the material, it says that it does get harder after you melt it down and take it out of the mold. However, I still was pretty skeptical about how that was going to work out, especially because in the formula that I created using this base, we are adding some additives to it. And I just wasn't sure how that was all gonna work out. So if you guys use this base at all or you try it out for yourself, you'll be happy that I've done this kind of testing for you so that you already kind of know what to expect when you get it. Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and melt this down. Now the directions uh, that come with this, or actually I just downloaded and printed this off directly from their website, from the Stevenson website on how to melt this down. So you can melt it down in the microwave as you would do any other melt and pour soap. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pop this in the microwave, but it does say to be careful not to get it too hot um, because you don't wanna you know, overheat or singe the base, which you can do with any melt and pour soap, by the way. So we're just gonna slowly melt this down on about 30 second increments until this whole beaker full of um, product is completely melted down and I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, while that base is melting down, we're gonna go ahead and weigh off the additives that we're gonna be using today. Now, this is really what's interesting about this melt and pour base is it can take additives. And I've ex been experimenting with different additives and things to use in this base. And I think you're really gonna like what I've come up with here as a combination. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add in some DL panthenol. Now, the one of the kind of, I guess there's some pros and cons to using this. So one of the pros is it does take additives, meaning you can put things in it to make it more customizable. The kind of one of the cons is, is you cannot use as much as you would use in say uh, a shampoo bar that you were going to make from scratch. You can add a lot more of the things that you want quantity wise. Um, and this will only take a certain percentage of, of additives. So that's my DL Panthenol, and I did get this one from Brambleberry. DL Panthenol is gonna be your fortified or um, pro-vitamin five, B5. And then the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add in some Baobab protein. You guys have seen me use this before in um, and another conditioner bar video, I believe. Baobab protein is a really nice thing to add to shampoos. It's gonna give your hair strength and structure. Um, I like the use of proteins in my shampoo bars and conditioner bars. And today we're gonna be using some Baobab protein. You could use any type of protein that's um, hair safe. This one's gonna add some conditioning properties to the shampoo and also just some strengthening protein and vitamins to your hair. 
And then the next thing we're going to add to this container is some Cetrimonium Chloride. I got this one from Making Cosmetics. I also got the Baobab Protein from Making Cosmetics. And the Cetrimonium Chloride is used for as like an anti-frizz or an anti-static agent. Um, it has really nice rinse off properties. It helps the shampoo to rinse out of your hair very cleanly and have your hair feel very soft. So I like using the Cetrimonium Chloride. And we're just weighing this off. These ingredients here, they are all water soluble ingredients. And what I'm going to do next is just go ahead and give this formula, this, these ingredients, a little bit of a stir because I'm getting that DL panthenol all mixed in and dissolved. So the DL panthenol will dissolve in any type of watery base and we want to go ahead and get that all dissolved. And then the next thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and add in a little bit of color. Now for people who have never made shampoo bars before, you literally don't have to use any additives. Um, the shampoo bar base, you could melt it down, pour it into your mold of choice, and it's ready to use. So I, of course, because I formulate things all the time, I wanted to make this a little bit more of a customizable product or something that you could melt down and just add in a few of your own ingredients and make it more of your own, but you certainly don't have to. So I am using some blue water soluble dye. Now, because this product, this melt and pour base is so opaque and white, the actual shampoo bar is gonna be more of a pastel color and not super, super vibrant in color. It's gonna come up more of a pastel. Um, I guess you could add more color, but I hesitate to do that. I haven't really experimented with it yet. And I do know that the, these water soluble dyes, I got this one from Fizz Fairy. They're very concentrated. So a little bit goes a long way. So I'm gonna be adding in just the tiniest teaspoon, not even a teaspoon. It's a, just a miniature little scoop here. I'm gonna add a little bit more just because I do know that this bar, one of the cons is it is kind of harder to color. It doesn't come up bright because of that opaqueness. So that is one thing. You don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of a, um, versatility or flexibility with the color. So we're just gonna go ahead and allow that to dissolve and bloom. It looks super, super dark blue right now, but I promise you, once it gets mixed into the shampoo, our base, it mellows way out. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna be adding to this little container here, now that my color is all mixed in, is just some fragrance oil. And I am using Freesia Bubble Bath by Brambleberry, and it's a gorgeous, clean, fragrance. Let me see if I can kind of describe it for you. It has like those top notes of floral freesia, but it's balanced out really nicely with kind of like a clean effervescent bubbly smell. It smells really good. If you guys haven't tried this one, I highly recommend it. It's, it seems like a really good shampoo bar fragrance or just a shampoo in general to me. Okay, and we're going to be adding in, this is the last thing we're putting in to our shampoo bars. Okay. Now we're going to give this a little bit of a stir. And then we're going to set this aside until we are ready to combine this with our melted shampoo bar base. Okay, so our melt and pour base is all the way melted down and you just wanna slowly melt it until it's completely transparent and you can see through it. 
So it's clear right now, but it does cure opaque. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is just add in, we're gonna put our additives into the base and we're gonna give it a good stir. And again, it looks very dark in color right now, but I assure you it will not stay that way. Okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and give that a good stir and make sure everything is very well incorporated before we pour it into our cavity mold. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over and I'm slowly gonna pour in to each cavity. Again, I didn't wanna put flowers into all of the cavities because I am not sure how that's gonna work out. I don't know if they're gonna float or just get completely swallowed up. So this is what we're doing. If this was the top of the bar, I would wait for this to be set up a little bit and then I would sprinkle some botanicals. But being that this is the, this bottom of the mold is actually the top of your bar, it's hard to know what's gonna happen. Okay, I think for these, I'm actually gonna just wait a minute or so until that sets up and then I'll pour the rest of it over the top and hopefully they'll stick to the bottom because I do see in this one that it is kind of floating but it's hard to know what's gonna happen. Um, I do have a little bit of rubbing alcohol here. If you do see any bubbles, look how smooth and glassy it looks. I'm just gonna put a little bit of alcohol on that one just to make sure that we pop any of those bubbles. Oh, as you can see, we already have it. It is setting up a little bit already here. So I think we probably, I'm just gonna go ahead and give this another stir and then see if we can't pour the rest of this over it and just get those flowers to kind of stick to the bottom. They probably won't show. They probably won't show that much, but we'll see. Okay, so this has to stay in the mold for several hours and then you can take them out of the mold. Perfect. So that was a 540 gram batch and it fits perfectly in this mold in these cavities. So you have to let this set up for several hours before you can unmold it. And I would advise not popping this into the freezer um, just because this does have a high glycerin content and it's gonna be prone to sweating anyway. And if you put this type of product into the fridge, it can attract all the moisture and cause these to sweat. So I'm just gonna allow these to set up room temperature here on the counter and then I'm gonna remove them from the mold for you. Okay, these have been setting up in the mold now for several hours and they are ready to come out of the mold. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the sides away. You can see the flowers on this one have floated up to the top. So they still are pretty soft. Like I said, they will harden up overnight, but this is what they look like. And actually the color turned out really nice. So. I will be putting a link to that color that I used. This blue is very concentrated and works pretty good. Okay, let's check one with the flowers and see what happened with that one. Well, you can barely see the flowers in this, but it might be cute to find a mold where you can just this is the top and you can sprinkle the flowers as it's setting, but that's how it turned out on mine this time. Gives it a little speckle, a little variation. All right, there you go. They're super cute looking and a perfect shape for shampoo. So the last thing to do here is just to show you what it looks like when they lather up. These are still rather soft. Um, 
I will bring one of my little test bars out to show you how much they harden up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of a lather demo here, but before I do that, I wanted to show you uh, one of my little test bars here, and this was a tiny batch that I made, and I've been using it for probably about a week now, so I wanted to show you how it hardens up. So as you can see, it's hard like a regular melt and pour soap bar is after it hardens up. These are not gonna be like that until probably tomorrow or the next day. So just to show you that they really do harden up and I wanted to go ahead and show you how these work. So just to give you an idea of the lather here. I'm gonna go ahead and wet my hands. And just activate the lather. Now this is a good lather uh, for a melt and pour type bar. It's dense and creamy feeling, very soft and conditioning feeling. So it does give a good lather. I guess my only, my only criticism about using this one in the shower is that it's, they are so, so soft and smooth that when you're putting it in your hair, it takes a little bit of um, effort to get a lather going, but once it works up, it works really, really nice. So overall, I'm super pleased with this Melt and Pour Shampoo Sendet Bar Base, and the possibilities I think are endless as far as what types of additives you wanna put inside yours. And also, you could use this for a gentle pH balance body bar, or you can add some interesting in, um, anti-aging additives or things in there to make it a really nice facial bar of soap. So overall, I think this is going to change. This is going to be a game changer in the world of melt and pour soaps and Sendet bars. So uh, I'm very pleased with it so far. And I think that we're going to be seeing some more videos with some other um, options here about what you can do with these. Well, that concludes today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Please remember to Subscribe to my channel, leave a comment or question below. Your comments and questions really mean a lot to me and share this video with a friend. All right, everyone, catch you on the next video. Bye, keep shining.